The first lecture that I begin today is related to separation of compounds. Advanced analytical course. The first lecture that I begin today is related to separation of compounds. Analytical chemistry as you know involves the application of a wide range of techniques and methodologies to obtain and access qualitative, quantitative and structural information of the analyte. It could be for the following reasons, quality control, monitoring and quality of pollutants, clinical and biological studies, geological assays, fundamental and applied research. I would like to draw your attention to the word analyte. Analyte is the substance of which we do the analysis. Further on, purification of compounds is related to the fact that any analyte needs to be extracted efficiently. Separation of purified analyte takes place quantitatively by chromatography and then the purified material is analyzed by spectroscopic method. So, if we see there are three main steps, one is the extraction, the second step is the chromatographic separation and the third step is the spectroscopic analysis. Any mistake in any step mentioned above can lead to wrong results. Each step is equally important for correct analysis. Analytical techniques. There are numerous chemical and physicochemical processes that can be used to provide analytical information. The processes are related to a wide range of atomic and molecular properties and phenomena that enable compounds to be deducted and or quantitatively measured. Atomic and molecular spectroscopy and chromatography together comprise the major technique of analytical chemistry. Steps of analysis if we try to look at are just three of them as what I mentioned a little while ago. First step is extraction where we take out the analyte into a medium from where it can be analyzed. The second step is the process of separation or separation. Now this could be a physical method or by chromatography and the third step related to analysis is related to spectroscopic methods. It could be by atomic absorption spectroscopy or by ultraviolet that is UV visible spectroscopy, infrared or IR spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR spectroscopy or mass fragmentation called the mass spectroscopy, either of them or all of them. So once looks at it and any mistake I again repeat that any mistake in any one of these steps can lead to wrong results. Chromatography, it is a broad range of physical methods used to separate or to analyze complex mixtures. The components to be separated are distributed between two phases, a stationary phase which is called the bed or a mobile phase which percolates through the stationary bed. Now this should be understood very clearly that there has to be two phases and the analyte has to partially go into one of the phases to get separated. A mixture of various components enter a chromatographic process and the different components are flushed through the system at different rates. These differential rates of migration in the mixture moves over to the absorptive material provides the actual separation. If I have to explain it in simpler words, 
there is a stationary bed and there is a mobile bed and the mobile then percolates and according to the nature of the analyte or the components of the analyte the separation takes place in these two phases and they start moving at a different pace and that is how the uh, the pace widens and the separation actually takes place what happens repeated sorption and desorption acts that take place during the movement of the sample over the stationary bread determines the rates the smaller the affinity the molecule has for the stationary phase the shorter the time spent in the column now if we try to look at the whole process the if we imagine that a column is made up of several layers then there is an adsorption in the first layer desorption adsorption desorption and this process for an analyte makes it get separated from the other components of the analyte and the lesser the affinity it has for the stationary bed it would move out of it faster so one analyte may have a different rate of affinity and the other analyte may have a different rate and that is how due to these differences in rate of affinity and rate of traversing the analytes are separated in any chemical or bioprocessing industry the need to separate and purify a product from a complex mixture is necessary an important step in the production line because these are continuous processes and one needs to check whether the right kind of product is getting to the next step what can what all can the purifying process do chromatography can purify basically any soluble or volatile substance if the right adsorbent material is used if the right carrier fluid is used and the operating conditions are rightly employed second chromatography can be used to separate delicate products since the production and the conditions under which it is performed are not typically severe for these reasons chromatography is quite well suited to a variety of uses in the field of biotechnology such as separating mixtures of protein now you know that proteins are very sensitive material they cannot be subjected to very high heating or very cold weather or very adverse conditions and chromatography conditions are very nominal and they can be uh, used for the separation of proteins very efficiently therefore chromatography is widely used in biotechnology the mobile phase is comprised of a solvent into which the sample is injected the solvent and the sample flow through the column together thus the mobile phase is often referred as carrier fluid the stationary phase is the material in the column for which the components to be separated have varying affinities the materials which comprise the mobile and the stationary phases vary depending on the general type of chromatographic process being performed so if i have to sum up i would say that chromatographic separations involve only two phases one is the mobile phase and the other one is the stationary phase and the analyte then has different rates of movement and adsorption desorption helps it to get separated on this column which is the stationary phase sampling sampling and sample handling is very important aspect of analysis due to varying periods of time that may elapse between the sample collection and analysis storage conditions must be such as to avoid undesirable losses contamination or other changes that can affect the results of the analysis i would like to draw your attention to this very fact that 
any and every method of sampling is not allowed in analytical chemistry. There is a protocol and the protocol must be met in order to save the sample from any kind of contamination or any kind of undesirable losses. Calibration. Standardization and calibrations are very integral part of any analysis. Calibration or standardization is a process of establishing the response of a detection or measurement system to known amounts or concentrations of an analyte. A chemical standard is a material or substance of a very high purity that is used to standardize a reagent or a calibrate an instrument. Now, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that calibration and standardization play a very vital role in identifying the analyte. If we have an unknown pesticide sample and we want to find out which pesticide is this, we would have to evaluate it against many of these standard materials of pesticides and then take a look at which peak matches with the uh, unknown analyte. So that is why calibration and standardization play a very vital role in analytical chemistry.